Hi, I'm Ryan Lupien, proud owner of this 1999 Jeep Cherokee XJ. But there's just one problem. I can't drive it. Wow, beautiful day. Can't wait to go for a drive in my 1999 Jeep Cherokee XJ. Oh no! Hey, you, over here. I got the solution. So if you own a Jeep Cherokee, really any Jeep probably from the late 80s and 90s, this is a very common problem where your ignition cylinder itself will stop turning. Basically, it'll act like as if your wheel is locked and that the solution to turn it would be to pull it side to side, but it still doesn't turn. And it's just ignition lock cylinder. So inside of it, the pins, they get budged up over time, they stop moving. So you're gonna need to replace it. We went and got the Dorman ignition cylinder replacement. This is the beautiful part number. This model automatically will configure itself to your car key. So there are cheaper replacements. They come with a cylinder, brand new key, drop it in, you're good to go. So then you're gonna have a separate key for your doors and your ignition, which is not good. So with this, we can keep our factory key, replace the ignition, just like it's brand new, and we won't have to worry about this problem anymore. We got the key in here, it won't move. No matter what you budget, you move the wheel, it's not gonna turn. The solution to that that's temporary, grab, screwdriver, anything with a heavy hand like this, and you give it Two little taps. And the key will turn and you can drive your car. Now, if you just need a short term solution, that's enough, but eventually it will stop working. And in order to remove this and replace it, you have to be able to turn the key. So if you can't turn your key at all, this is not gonna work for you. Not without probably drilling out something in here first to be able to pop it off. So if you can still turn it, you're going to want to order a replacement and get it done as soon as possible. So I'm going to show you how to take this out. It's super simple. All you need is the screwdriver that you've been smacking the shit out of it with. So with your key in the on position, you're going to take a screwdriver or anything long and pointy. There's this hole here directly under your steering column. Take the screwdriver in, feel around a little bit for a little button that's on the bottom of your cylinder. And once you push that, you can pull straight out. Now in some models, this will come all the way out, but for some reason in mine, it gets a little bit jammed up on the bottom here. So if that happens, you have to take this off. Super easy. Just keep your screwdriver here. I'll show you underneath this panel. There'll be two or three screws. There's one. And there's the other, and then this will come down, and there's clips that hold it here, so you just give it a tug, that comes off, and then you've got a metal plate underneath it, again, a couple screws, depending on who's played around with your Jeep before, you might have more, you might have less, you might have none at all. Now that you have access under the steering column, you can reach the other screw for this cover. There's two in the front, one here, one there, and one in the back, which is the reason you have to drop that piece there. Now you can split this rubber boot off, take your screwdriver, feel up in there, and we'll remove these three screws.
Ooh, two. Third one. Three screws. All right. Got our three screws out. Now this comes loose and we can pull the whole thing out just like that. There's a plastic cover here. Only goes on one way. You can slip this back over. Uh, there's a little nub on it that faces mostly towards the top. Slide that back in there. Boom, so now that's on, that's in place. This is the thing that was preventing our cylinder from sliding out in the first part. So now that you've got this out, you can see on the bottom, this is the little nub that you had to push on to pop it out. And it only works if the key is in the on position. Um, and you can kind of see on the side how it works once it's out, the way it turns. But uh, yeah, see when it's off, doesn't push when it's on pushes in so that's why you have to be able to put the key in or else you have to do some sketchy stuff all right now that you got this out we can throw this in the garbage and we'll move on to our replacement cylinder in the dormant box you just have this bag here comes with two simple parts the main housing for your cylinder and this is the part that does the coating for your key So we'll just take this part out and set it to the side for now. The main thing we want is the coating box. So this is where you're going to take your original key. And on the side of it, you got your instructions. So basically, you insert the key fully, twist it clockwise once, counterclockwise, and then you can pull it out and put it into the main housing. So step one, insert key, make sure it's fully inserted. Step two, turn the key clockwise. You'll feel it crunch and do some coding stuff and click. Once it's back at top, then you can rotate the key counterclockwise to the top and it pulls out and now your key cylinder is coated, ready to go for this. And we can grab the other part and insert it. Take the cap off, make sure you open it facing up so that the springs don't fall out. You'll see there's two little, oops, two pins. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Let's go set that down. So you got two pins and there's a spring inside, so if it does fall apart, spring first, then pin on top. And that's what you need. Then you're gonna go ahead and take your cylinder and put it in. We'll see, yep, it only fits kind of one way there. Feel it slide in. And we turn the key, and there it is. Complete ignition cylinder ready to drop back in and just reverse everything we did and your car should be ready. Turn on every time now. Won't have to worry about this again. Instruction break. Be a man. Learn how to do shit and don't be stupid. So once you've got your new cylinder ready to go, you have to put everything back together just the way that it came apart. So. Take the plastic piece, line it up, and then you'll see there's just little plastic tabs like around it. Just make sure that those all fit in where they're supposed to go, and screw it back in. Over here, 
just line up your clips on each side. Get my little schmickety smack. And that holds in. And final screws in underneath. Now you've got everything back together here, and then you can simply take your ignition cylinder with it in the run position, pop it in there, smack her in, good to go. All right, all right, I'll give it a, okay, I believe you, sure. It's like a brand new car. Thanks, white t-shirt guy. You ask me to bring that guacamole to the party, I'll say no, no. If you ask me bring the guacamole to the party, I'll say no, no, no. That shit's too expensive. <laughs> yeah, man. Can't wait to go for a drive in my 1999 Jeep Cherokee XJ.